Hi, my name is Sarthak and this is the Remedio Fundus on Phone. Today I'm going to teach you how to capture excellent images of the retina with the FOP. Let's dive in. In this video, we'll look at the following things. Setting up the FOP, proper holding position and posture, the right way to capture an image, using auto mode for easier image capture, and a few exceptional cases where you will have to adjust some settings. Let's get started. First, let's take the eye cup. Then take off the lens cap and attach the eye cup to the front of the device. Make sure that the eye cup has gone all the way in. These flaps must be horizontal. This will stop extra light from entering the patient's eye and is crucial to capturing a good image. For the same reasons, dim the lights in the room if possible. Then ask the patient to cover their left eye gently with their palm. This will prevent any light from entering the other eye. Then open the FOP app and log in. Let's check the settings and make sure they look like this. These are the settings we recommend to first-time users. Now, let's open a patient folder and enter the imaging screen. Then turn on the device from here. The iPhone and the device will now be paired via Bluetooth. When pairing is complete, the ready indicator will turn green. Then, select a fixation point from here based on the retinal area to capture. Let's start with this one. This is what the fixation point looks like to the patient. You should ask them to look at this point while imaging. Hold the device with your main hand like this. Place your thumb here on the trigger button. Make sure that the white mark on the focus wheel is in the center. Place your other hand at the front of the device in an L shape with your thumb under the neck of the device. Position the device in front of the patient's eye and let your fingers firmly touch their forehead. Make sure that you are at the same level as the patient. You should either be sitting down or you both can stand. Don't hold the device at an angle like this. Hold it straight in front of the patient's face. Once you've held the device in position, make sure that it's pointed straight at the patient's eye and not somewhere else. Inside the eye, you'll see a small purple circle moving around. This is the pupil. You must keep the pupil centered with this cross mark. Then you can slowly move forward keeping the pupil aligned with the cross mark until it fills this green circle. Remind the patient to look at the fixation point and keep their eyes wide open. As you move closer, the eye cup will press against the patient's face. This will not hurt them and is normal. Press your fingers firmly against the patient's forehead for stability. Once you fill the large green circle with the pupil, and the details of the retina are in focus, click the trigger button immediately. That was a macula-centered image of the right eye. The image quality is sufficient, so we can proceed. This is the fixation point we just captured an image for. Now we are going to capture a disc-centered image of the right eye. Now let me go back to the imaging screen and change the fixation point. Tap here to select right eye disc centered. Let's repeat the same steps again. Here is the purple circle, which is the pupil. I slowly move forward, keeping it in the center of the circle. But now I have moved towards the side by mistake and I have lost the pupil. If this happens to you, don't move the device sideways or pivot it like this to find the pupil. You can just move the entire device slowly to the side and you can find it. As I move the device to the side, you can see the pupil coming back into the view. If you still can't find it, 
go back out and start again. That will be easier. So now I'm coming back out and starting again. I move in slowly with my fingers comfortably resting on the patient's forehead. Once the pupil has filled the large green circle and the details are clear, I click the trigger button and an image is captured. That was a disc centered image of the right eye. Now we have captured these two images of the right eye. We need to repeat the same images for the left eye. Let's start with left eye macula centered. Return to the imaging screen and tap here to choose left eye macula centered. Let's repeat the same steps again. Here is the small purple circle which is the pupil. I slowly move forward keeping it in the center and I click. But this is not a good image. It is underexposed. You can tell by the dark areas around the periphery. Let's replay the capture to see why this happened. You can see that I did not fill in the large green circle well enough before clicking. That is why the image became underexposed. Another problem is when you go too deep into the eye, you will see white patches like this. This results in overexposed images with white areas around the edges. So it is important to click at the right time. If you move too much inwards, you will overexpose the image. And if you click before filling in the large green circle, the image will be underexposed. You should click when the large green circle is filled properly and the details are clear. Let's compare the two. If you're still finding it difficult to capture an image, you can use auto mode. In this mode, an image will be captured automatically. You only need to hold the device in position and move in slowly. Let's capture the last image of the left eye in auto mode. Tap here to select left eye disc centered. Then turn on auto mode from here. Then click on the trigger button just once and you'll see the on-screen trigger flashing. Then hold the device in the right position and slowly move into the eye. Position the cross mark against the center of the pupil and fill in the green circle. When the pupil has filled in the green circle, it will start spinning to focus. When the green circle is spinning, hold the device still, do not move forwards or backwards. An image will be captured automatically. When you are in auto mode, click the trigger only once. If you click it again, auto mode will be ignored. We have captured the two most important images for each eye. They correspond to these four fixation points. These four images will cover most screening needs. Now let's look at a few exceptional cases where you need to work a bit differently to get a good image. Let's look at each of these cases. With some patients, it's not possible to fill in the large green circle fully. Here is an example. If this happens, the first thing to do is to ask your patient to close their eyes for a minute so that the pupil can open up. Then dim the lights in the room and make sure that the patient is covering their other eye with one hand. If none of this works, it could mean that the patient has a small pupil. In this case, you can turn on the small pupil mode and continue. You can see that I am now able to fill in the pupil more fully and the large green circle is getting filled properly. Let's compare the two. On the left, you have the small pupil mode on and on the right, you have the small pupil mode off. If the small pupil mode doesn't help you, you might have to dilate the patient's eye. With some patients, you might not be able to get the retina in focus with the default settings. This can happen if they wear glasses. In such cases, we have to adjust the focus wheel to account for the refractive error of the eye. This is the focus wheel. Depending on the refractive error, you have to turn the wheel to the left or to the right. Once the pupil has filled the large green circle and the retina is visible, 
you can adjust the focus wheel in small increments. Once the retina is in focus, click. If refractive error is negative, move the focus wheel to the left. If refractive error is positive, move the focus wheel to the right. Then ask the patient if the fixation point is getting clearer and make small adjustments until it is clear. When you are in auto mode, leave the focus wheel at the center. If the image appears dim like this, you can adjust the flash intensity. Tap here to adjust it. This is an example of an image taken with the right flash intensity. And these are images with low and high flash intensity. If you followed all the steps properly, you should be able to capture great images. Remember, always reduce the amount of light entering the patient's eye from the environment. Hold the device in the right position. Center the pupil and fill the large green circle properly, then capture. With practice, your images will get better. Please watch the remaining videos in the playlist to know more about using the Remedio FOP. Thank you. Have a great day.